here we go again all right brothers and sisters <laughs> let me say a prayer for me for you before we begin dear heavenly father we come before your throne in the name of yeshua we ask that any of those who seek to speak against this message which i'm going to give that they would be silenced god that a dread and a fear would come upon upon them Father God, there are so many people attacking Christians. In fact, about a year and a half, two years ago, I told Pastor Patrick about this dream that I had and, and a few others, but I didn't make it public. But I saw a man in an archer's window, God, in this dream. And he was in <clears throat> an archer's window is a special window in a castle or on the wall, castle wall. And they were shooting arrows at Christian brothers from that window. And he hit a brother and he fell down. He was shooting him in the legs. It was a man. And this is a well-known man. And I didn't tell this man because I didn't understand this dream and I don't know what to do now. But this man was firing these arrows and he hit a man in front of me. And so I dove and grabbed the guy's arrow and his bow and I fired back, blind fired at that window. And just as I did, the man that was doing the shooting stepped in the way and the arrow struck him in the chest and stopped him from hitting the brothers and sisters. And I know this man, I recognized his face, and I woke up. So God Almighty, there are those that are attacking the Christian brethren. We rebuke them, and we come against them, and we bind them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We bind these people according to the Word of God, that they would stop what they are doing. Father God, we ask that those who are seeking the Holy Spirit, that they would be filled. We know that it is not necessary for salvation because the thief on the cross did not receive the Holy Spirit before he died. There are many that die in foxholes that have deathbed confessions that do not get filled. But the scripture tells us that we need to be filled. Paul asked those people when he met them, have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? And they said, we haven't even heard of such a thing. And then he prayed for them, laid hands on them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's a very desirable thing. But salvation comes through confessing of sins and belief. You have to have faith, believe that Christ is your sacrifice. So God Almighty, we ask that those who are not born again, that see this message, that they would seek your face and become born again. There's a sinner's prayer. You can find it on the internet and pray that prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Matter of fact, we'll say it right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne and we ask that all of our sins and unrighteousness, all our rebellions, be forgiven. We ask that the Son of God cleanse us from all iniquity. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would come into the hearts of those who are listening, that you would paint upon the doorpost and the lintel of their hearts the blood with a sacrifice of atonement so that when the death angel comes that he'd pass over those who are covered by the blood. Father God, we ask in the mighty name of your Son that you'd undertake for those who need financial help. God, there's a woman that contacted me and I've tried to contact her but her account is blocked from me for some reason. I'll put the name in the details of this person I want to help them anyway Lord God we ask that you'd undertake these are the end times that you'd bless those who are seeking you and that they would sanctify themselves through the blood of the Lamb in the mighty name of Yeshua we pray amen <clears throat> all right um, the Lord look I want to tell you guys something uh, about two months ago well first we'll talk you know, there's been many things the Lord has shown me, and then I've made videos about them before they happened, right? And any of you guys that know me or know my channel, you'll know the things that I've said. I've talked about uh, Hamas making these long-range rockets that could strike strike uh, Jerusalem, and that happened. Talked about women dressing up, Palestinian women dressing up as, as Jewish women. Look, my phone is all messed up. I don't know what's going on. It's about to fall apart. I ordered a new one, so it was hard to do, too. Anyway, um, these uh, Palestinian women would dress up as Jewish Israeli women and would do t acts of terrorism like stabbings and shooting, stuff like that, and that has happened. The Lord showed me that there would be an emergency alert system installed in Israel 
about a year and a half to two years before that happened, he showed me a woman calling because the city of Jerusalem will be attacked. She was calling, telling him to evacuate the city to five miles out. The Lord showed me that there would be five terrorists that would attack the London Bridge during the Olympics, the last Olympics, and that they would be captured, and I didn't know whether they were able to complete their mission or not. I saw them in Scotland Yard, and there were five terrorists captured, and they were going to try to blow that bridge up. The Lord showed me <clears throat> that the Russian ship Muscov would be involved in a major incident that's coming up. And now they've brought that ship out and it's been in the news numerous times. It happened right afterwards. The Lord showed me that there would be an earthquake in Israel. And I said that the Lord had showed me the earthquake and there was an earthquake that very day that I made that video. Um, the Lord has also shown me there's going to be an earthquake in the city of Los Angeles, 9.0 plus. I don't know when it happens. The Lord has also shown me there will be a worldwide earthquake, and I've warned people to get some supplies and waters and flashlight, things like that, to survive at least three or four days or a week in case this happens. Um, some of the things the Lord has shown me have not happened. He told me Betty White dies. She hasn't died yet. He did tell me the death of Grace and my dog Grace died. Um, he showed me things like he showed me my my daughter's boyfriend would cheat on her while they were at college and that she'd call my wife in the middle of the night and tell her and then that happened a month later. And uh, they were together for like three or four years and then this happened. And uh, the Lord told me about my job when I went to work for the fire department that the chief would call me three days in the future and would offer me this job and I'd work there 10 years and then after that I'd go to the oil fields for one year all of that happened exactly as God said I worked there exactly 10 years the chief called me I was number 13 on the list I'd applied for that job but it already been uh, filled like a month or a month and a half maybe in two months before this the, the job all the vacancies were filled I was number 13 so I was even after the 10 I was still three down on the list and they threw that list away and they had to, he had to get special permission from the human resources department to offer those three people that job and he called me on the third day just as the Lord told me the Lord also told me about my neighbor across the street that he was going to start a new business and God was going to bless him and that happened the Lord has told me personal things about brother Brian that there's no way I could know and brother Brian can tell you this OT for Jesus he can tell you the Lord showed me things in his house and I told him and I've never been to his house you see and I saw these things move from one room to the next how is that if it's not God talking to me then the Lord told me many many things I can't remember them all you know and I didn't categorize them right so it's very hard for me to search and find them but he did tell me that Saeed in November would be killed for his acts of terrorism he would be destroyed and I made a video about that and then a month later in December the guy named Saeed killed those people him and his wife in San Bernardino he was a terrorist and he killed those people and then they killed him that very same day they destroyed him they they shot many many holes in his body he was destroyed and then the Lord told me that uh, I had a dream and I saw Donald Trump and God spoke that to me in the shower. He said, Saeed will be killed because I asked the Lord, can you give me something, you know? And then he told me that Saeed would be killed. So then the Lord showed me in a dream that Donald Trump, I saw these flags and uh, made a video about it. Before it happened, the Lord showed me Donald Trump wins Super Tuesday. And... I saw the word nominee, and then I saw the number five, and then I saw him selling Trump memorabilia, and then I heard that there would be a battle against him, a war against him, that every side would be against him, and I was like, what does this mean? What? I don't understand. Is it? Does he get killed? Is that what happened? I don't know what happened, and so I talked about it. I didn't really mention it that much in the first video, but either the second or third one before it happened, I said, hey, they're all going to turn against him. That's what the Lord showed me. We'll see, and then it did happen. And then now, yesterday, Donald Trump won on a Tuesday again, and he's the presumptive nominee. Uh, Ted Cruz, who had sworn that he would never drop out, dropped out yesterday after he just said he would never drop out. And he said it yesterday, and then he dropped out at the end of the day. So Donald Trump, it looks like, is going to be the nominee. 
And then the Lord had told me that America is going to be judged. <laughs> you see, America, we are the voice of Christianity and righteousness to the world, but no longer. Our president, the Lord showed me that Barack Hussein Obama is a very bad person. He showed me he's the AC, Antichrist. Anyway, uh... <clears throat> I've talked about this on a few occasions. He is a, from the tribe of Dan. His mom was. So the Bible says that Antichrist will be of the tribe of Dan and these things. So what the Lord has shown me, and there's so many people, even now when I do this video, there'll be people that come against me and say, oh, brother, you're wrong, blah, blah, blah. He's supposed to be an Assyrian. We don't know exactly how this is going to work out to the end. So don't start coming against me and don't tell me there's no rapture because the Lord showed me in a dream. You see, I didn't believe in the rapture. The word is harpazo which, harpazo, which means to catch away. And it's in Thessalonians and several other places. And it's been taught since the year 137. Hey, Abby. Since the word, I uh, got a crazy dog. This thinks it's a guard dog. So it here's what happened. It was, it heard a mosquito walking on the fence and it decided to call the alert. There was a mosquito. Anyway, <clears throat> so <laughs> what I'm saying is, the Lord showed me these things. I don't know how they're going to work out, but I know that the other things he's told me are happening. The Lord showed me that there will be an attack against Demona and the Demona nuclear facility in Israel. And I made a video about that. He also told me that like 3,200 NATO forces will be attacked and that Moskov ship, I believe, will be involved and they'll be killed. I don't know when that happens. Does it happen after the rapture? Does it happen before? Now let's get back to the rapture thing. The Lord showed me, because <clears throat> I didn't believe in it, you see. The people that I'd talked to that really worked in the Lord had told me, ah, oh, it's not in there, so we don't believe it. <clears throat> and back then I was buying beans and bullets and all that stuff too. This was back in the early 80s, excuse me. Got an itch on my hand here. So, <clears throat> hold my phone with one hand. Anyway, uh, in 2011, I wasn't serving the Lord, and then he spoke to me when I was in a car, a truck. I was in a car with my brother, and he spoke to me and told me to stop what I was doing and repent, that he was coming soon and to get my house in order. And so, you know, that's another thing against once saved, always saved. Why did the Lord tell me, repent? And then he told me, you're going to be lost if you don't. How come he says he can blot your name out of the book? Huh. <clears throat> wow. How come Paul said he had to beat his body daily so that he, having preached the gospel, would not himself become a castaway? Hmm. We do have security of the believer. But we also, if we choose to walk away from God, God's not going to stop us. You see, you have free will. Lucifer de demonstrated his free will. He was the covering cherub of God, and he walked away and rebelled against God and tried to dethrone God. Hmm, one saved, always saved. How about God makes it and then they're forever, right? No. So anyway, back to this dream. There's so many scriptures. There's talk about the wedding. You see, in the Jewish tradition of the wedding, the husband doesn't go away and then let the bride be attacked and molested and beaten and tortured and beheaded to get in. You see, people are mis misunderstanding the revelation and what it says in there. You see, and what Christ said in Matthew 24, he's talking to three different ages that are happening because he talks about how the abomination of desolation will be set up. And he said, he that readeth or hears this, let him understand. Huh, that means there's got to be some understanding. You know, you got to use your brain and you got to use the Holy Spirit. And so anyway, back to my dream once again. And so what happened was, my wife was saying, there's not going to be any rapture. I mean, my phone's going low on battery. There's not going to be any rapture or anything. Hang on, i got to charge this phone.
know, the thanking of everybody, which he's done in the past. But the, but the tone of it was clearly different. Sure, the themes were there. We're going to bring back America jobs. We've been losing. We're going to be winning again and all the rest of it. But we, ne what we may now, Megan, be seeing the long-awaited campaign to something new and different. And we'll see whether he's able to succeed in bringing a party that is clearly not fully behind him together. Mm -hmm. Ryan's Priebus uh, tweeting out tonight, Donald Trump will be presumptive GOP nominee. We all need to unite oh. and focus on defeat. That painting. My wife did that painting. She's a pretty good artist. Sometimes she can really copy things, but it's hard for her to come up with anything original. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm in here. I'm going to have to finish this in here because this thing's low on batteries. Uh, so, what happened was, I was telling her that the rap, you know, the Lord had told me there was going to be a rapture. I don't know, my phone's glitching or something crazy. And uh, anyway, she was saying, no, there's not. You're crazy. They've been saying that for years. He's never coming back. And just rebuking me and attacking me and telling me not to tell anyone. So I was praying about it. And first the Lord showed me a wedding. That I was going to a wedding. <laughs> and I made a video about that. And then the Lord. And then I have a 1969 Harley Davidson motorcycle. An FLH 1200. And so I have to start that every so often. Or the seals go bad. And so I was supposed to start it. right. And the day before I'd watched the. 12 minutes at a time I watched the Passion of Christ and when it came to the part where they were where they were flogging Christ and beating him when he was tied up there with that cat of nine tails you know it was uh, just unbearable to me and I began to cry and cry out to God and then the next day it took me almost all day to watch it because I did it I downloaded it 12 minutes at a time I didn't have the movie I should have went and rented it but I was lazy and it was on the internet so I thought I'd watch it that way anyway so the next day, at about 4 o'clock, I was going to go ride my bike. My wife kept telling me, hey, you're going to ride that bike. Hey, you better start that bike. You're going to, that's a lot of money. You better start. So anyway, I said, okay. And I went. I started to go outside. And uh, as I got to the front door, the Lord spoke to me. And I was like, that sounds like the Lord. And he said, he said, go lay down and take a nap. I have something I want to show you. Because I was just telling my son Abraham, I said, I don't know if the rapture happens. I don't know if I'll even make it because in the dream, the Lord told me I had to be punished for for damaging his harvest. You know, and a lot of people all attack me on that one. But, you know, King David sinned against God with Bathsheba. And then what did God do? He punished David, even though he forgive him because the law said under the law, the law said that the adulteress and the adulterer, the man, both have to be stoned to death outside the camp. So God forgive him, but yet he still had to punish him. He, his child died, and then a sword came to David's house forever. He's forgiven, but yet forever. And he said, you're a man after my own heart, but yet forever a sword is in your house, David. Read it. <laughs> so many people want to argue with me with the word of God and then they have some crazy interpretation they come up with that's not consistent with anything in God's word and these people are like yeah I've been a Christian for a year or five years and I know everything now and it's just so frustrating because you're and then like on my last video some person was, was posting to every single person on there this is a fake rapture. There is no such rapture. This man is a false prophet and all this. And I'm telling you by the Holy Spirit that the Lord showed me that there will be a rapture. And I'm telling you, he's coming soon. And those people that are saying that stuff, they better be careful because they're probably going to be stuck right here experiencing that tribulation period. We are not chosen to go through the wrath of God. The Bible says that over and over again. And what is the tribulation period? The wrath of Christ and the wrath of God. Why would Christ subject his own bride to his wrath? Huh. I don't care, brother. I understand something different. And I'm going to argue with you to the death. Well, don't argue with me. Start your own channel and see how many views you get on that crazy idea you have. Did God send you to come and attack me? Because you're attacking the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you that. I'm declaring that to you. And you're just going to cause yourself to your life to go in the toilet. And that's what's going to happen to it. So anyway, 
I went to go out, and the Lord told me no. He said, he, first he said, I want you to lay down and take a nap. I have something I want to show you. And I opened the door anyway. And then he spoke to me, and he said, I said, he said that words to me. I said, no, go lay down and take a nap. I have something to show you. So I closed the door, and I tell my wife, look, I'm tired. I'm going to, have, I'm going to lay down for a few minutes, just an hour. And she's like, oh, Gary, why don't you? And she's all, and I'm like, I will. I promise I'll get up and start that bike. I said, just give me an hour. Don't let anybody bug me or anything. Don't let any dogs. And I drug a piece of furniture in front of the hallway, and I walked down into our bedroom, and I laid down, and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if that's really you, even though he said it to me like that, and I was almost positive it was him, I said, Lord, if it's really you, you're going to have to put me to sleep because I'm not tired at all. It's only 4 o'clock, and I'm not tired, and I'm like wired now that you said that to me, and I can't go to sleep. So I laid there, and I said, I'll give you 10 minutes. Imagine that. I'll give you God, the creator of the universe. I'll give you 10 minutes. <laughs> how, how outrageous. <coughs> that thing's trying to jump on me today. <coughs> it started hitting me last night at like 7 o'clock again. I posted something on my deal about uh, Still Small Voice. There's two really good videos that talk about her and the blasphemy she's doing. You see, that person's new age. And when she became a Christian, she was sitting underneath the pyramid doing that demonic stuff and all of a sudden she felt that christ was the way and she didn't even feel bad for her sins she never repented and cried out to god and said god forgive me of my sins no she said i knew i was saved yeah and then she continues on with that and she does a lot of other stuff and if there's two guys i posted on google plus and i posted posted on my facebook about her and what she's doing and she's teaching directly against God's word. And this woman is using this stuff. And so many women are watching because she's so nice and kind. It's, it's like, oh, you know, she has such a great, wonderful, hypnotic voice. Wow. Did you ever, <laughs> did you ever watch the Jungle Book where that snake, trust in me, just in me. And he hypnotizes Mowgli, <laughs> you know, and everybody else he comes across uh, with that same monotone voice. And, oh, is that a sin, brother? I thought it was brotherly love, blah, blah, blah. You know what? There were prophets in the old days, that people that did that, and God killed them for their sin. Miriam came against Moses, and he struck her with uh, leprosy, and it was there forever. It never left her. She died with leprosy. You see? These people... There are many, many false prophets. If they say anything that does not agree with the word of God, they're wrong. You see? And she's talking about that asteroid hitting of Ephraim Rodriguez and all that. And God has shown me that is a lie. That will never happen. There's an asteroid that hits the earth called Wormwood. But it doesn't stop the earth from turning for three days. Because our our solar equipment, our solar shield would shut down, the magnetic field would cease, cease to exist, and then those gamma rays from the sun and all that would blow our atmosphere off and kill every one of us. There's all kinds of scientific evidence. The Earth is turning at 1,100 miles an hour at ground. You can't tell it because we're on a giant ball. But if it suddenly stopped because an asteroid hit it, which a five mile in diameter asteroid, even a 10 mile in diameter asteroid, could not stop the Earth's rotation. The only object big enough to do that would be something the size of the moon, and that would completely obliterate the earth. There would be no civilization left. So anyway, for that to stop, if it did, that wind would continue to blow at 1,100 miles an hour. Okay. Now, when you watch these nuclear explosions, and you see that tears those buildings to pieces and just scours the ground... The wind speed's like 300 and something miles an hour, 350 to 500 miles an hour, depending on how close you are to the blast. Those houses are far enough away, it's like 500. Now imagine 1,100 mile an hour wind across the entire earth that would tear every single structure off the earth. And then Ifrin Rodriguez says that asteroid hits by the island of Manoa and creates a 1,000 foot tall wave that goes all the way to the United States and floods all the East Coast and Florida and all that. Now think... And then he says millions of people die there in Puerto Rico and they're buried by these uh, by the uh, United States military. Okay, think. Now when that thing hits, it makes a wave that comes out in every direction and it's all the same thing because go out 
and take a big body of water and throw a rock in it and you'll see that rock will hit that water no matter what angle and it will make a same size wave on all the way around it okay unless it hits at a very steep angle and then on this side the wave will be a little bit more shallow <clears throat> but still it's only 10 miles away so that wave would hit the island of Puerto Rico and wash every structure off and kill all those guys that are supposed to be burying the body because there's two million body bags he says are there and they're going to bury all these people well that's not going to happen either because that wave would come over there and wash that island clean there would be no structures nobody would live why would they come over there and do anything and collect people and put them in prison and all that? There will be no people to survive. Well, it'll be a miracle somehow. And then he said that George Rashke would die on a certain day, but then he didn't. And then he said that the Lord Jesus would come down and touch his feet on the Mount of Olives in 2014. Did that happen? No. This man is a false prophet. I talked to his niece <laughs> personally, and their whole family's like, oh, we don't know. Our uncles went crazy. He had this dream and when he was 16 years old, you see, and it's not real. It's not going to happen. There is an asteroid going to hit, and there will be floods and all this stuff, but it's after the tribulation. You know, it's during, <laughs> it's during the tribulation period, either the great tribulation or the other one, you see. And there's going to be a one world religion and one world person that runs everything because some kind of catastrophe is going to happen but it's not going to happen until after the christians are taking taken you know and so anyway i have this <laughs> i don't know what to do about this woman's still small voice and i lost so many subscribers over coming against her and against these other ones that are daring to call themselves a prophet on their title i am prophet so and so and then you go well what have you ever saw that happened uh, nothing yet, but it's going to happen. When was that? Oh, like George Rashke. I saw it when I was 16 and I'm 58 years old now. Oh, wow. 50 years now almost you've, and it hasn't happened. Huh. Wow. And it's something that's impossible to happen. I'm telling you it's impossible. And that's the same thing with these people saying about Nibiru and all this stuff. <laughs> How come nobody, there are thousands of telescopes by private citizens. I own one. How come people haven't seen it? And they're all over at all points on the globe, you know? How come somebody hasn't went, hey, here's a picture of it. You know, you'll have people show you something they did with their camera or whatever. Oh, look, that's it. And it's what it is, is it's a reflection of the sensor of the camera. And it's a known effect. And these people are pushing that forward. Or they're saying, you know, just crazy stuff i don't know what to say so anyway the lord gave me this dream i went in there and i laid down and then my wife comes in there at 10 minutes after or eight minutes after so honey this dog which her name is grace she's scratching on the hallway door she's gonna wake you up anyway i've got to let her in here and she never comes in there and lays down with me and that dog jumped in bed with me and curled up next to my head and then my wife closed the door and I pulled the sheets up and instantly I was asleep and I was dreaming I was walking down the hallway to go ride my motorcycle. And this dream was, I don't know if you've had like realistic dreams. This was a dream, one of those dreams that you dream that are so realistic that you cannot tell you're asleep. Even after you wake up, was that a dream or was that real? That's how realistic it was. And I walked outside and I looked and all of a sudden it was from blue skies. It was cloudy and I was like, whoa, how did this happen? You know? Like anybody would. And so I looked to see if it was the whole valley because we live in a big valley. And I looked back and there was, and it was the whole valley. I looked towards my house from, but I was between the garage and my house. We have a, we had a garage that was separate. And I look and there's this huge opening in the sky, an oval shaped opening at an angle and, and sunlight is streaming through it. So it's like illuminate, you know, if you could see the ground, which I couldn't, it would be illuminating a spot on the ground. And it was so beautiful, and around the edge of it was this varying levels of purple till it got like almost black into where the cloud was. And in that purple area, there was thousands of little sparkles like uh, camera flashes going off. And it was so beautiful, and I was like, man, I'm so lucky I walked outside to ride my bike just at this moment when this was happening, and I can see this. And at that moment, I, he I heard a trumpet blow and then the ground began to shake there was like an earthquake but it was unusual it was front to back and side to side so i was like sliding on the concrete slightly with my feet and then i heard a crack of thunder and the sky split open and i saw this 
like silver looking ball with Christ's hand pressing out. It was like pressing out this way. And then I woke up and I heard the microwave go beep, beep, beep like that. And I woke up and it was exactly five o'clock. This was on the 5th of November. So it was 11, five. The dog named Grace was with me, which her name means five is the number five. And then it was five o'clock. And I was like, whoa. So I go in there and tell my wife, she's like, ah, you've just been watching too many YouTube videos. That's crazy. And then 10 days later, I dreamed it again at 1.23 in the morning, the exact same dream. It was so real. I walk out and I was like, ha ha, I laughed. Just like in my rapture dream, all of a sudden it's cloudy. So I looked to see if that thing was in the sky, this this beautiful thing, and it wasn't. And I was like, ah, oh, it's just a dream. So I turned around towards the garage, and then I heard that trumpet blow. And it was just so loud and so long and kept getting louder and louder. Then the ground began to shake, and I got on my knees, and I screamed to my wife, come outside, it's the rapture. And then... I, I said, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. And I said, especially the sins that I've committed that I don't know. And I said, forgive me of the sins against you, you know. And then all of a sudden, boom, I was I was torn up into the sky. And it was so the acceleration was so fantastic. And I began to scream, ah, because it frightened me. And then all of a sudden I went through space. And then I was in this big, huge white area. I don't know what it was. And there was a gigantic cross there in front of me and this cross was made out of like gold bars that were welded together and uh, in the center where the arms met it was a circle and on that circle were three small crosses over on the left hand side and then on the left hand arm of that cross and the cross was angled towards me like this and on the left hand side of that were five wavy lines of gold and then next to the right hand side of the cross was the word peace written in giant block letters of that same gold material and when I read those when I read the word peace, it meant shalom, it meant forgiveness, it meant righteousness, it meant all these things, just so many things that were so wonderful, and I began to cry in my dream, you know, and then I woke up, and it was one twenty-three in the morning, and then five days later, I had another rapture dream, and it was on November, like the 22nd or something, and I was at church, hey, Hannah, no, no, Hannah, Anyway, I had this rapture dream, and, and I dreamed I saw the pastor. I went into this church. I was walking down the road, and I went into this little white church. Hannah! I'm trying to do a video. Get in your house. I'm going to get you. Anyway, I went. I had this dream, and uh, I was walking down this country road, and I went into this little white church that had like a white picket fence. And I went in there and it was packed and there was only like four seats left. And so I was like trying to get through the people, you know, dodging them. And the pastor of our church that I was going to at the time stepped in front of me and put his hands out. And he said, and he, and he stopped me with his hands down to his side, but his palms towards me. And he was wearing this unique clothes. Now this dude was like a hippie dude. He always wore a black t-shirt and a sport jacket or something and, and Levi's. He didn't wear cool clothes. I mean, he wore cool clothes. He never wore like a tie and all this stuff. And he's wearing this beautiful purple shirt, a purple blue color with silver thread sewn in it. So it like sparkled. I'd never seen a shirt like that before in my life. And uh, he was wearing a pair of uh, khaki pants, you know, and uh, they weren't jeans like he usually wears. And so, and he had a tie on and he was clean shaven. And he always had a goatee. So anyway, he says, I don't know what I could have done to deserve this. People are attacking me in the church. He said, I don't know what I've done. And uh, and then the Lord Spirit came on me and I said, well, I said, the Lord says to repent, humble yourself and repent. And then he just said it again to me, that same thing. I don't know what I could have done. And then the trumpet blew. And I began to go up, and my skin began to turn this gold color. Oh, it was slow this time as I was going up, and he was screaming and had his hands out to me. Help me, help me. And I said, the Lord says to you, humble yourself and repent. And then I woke up, and then I told my wife the dream that morning. And we went to church, and we're looking for him. And I told her about how this clothing that he wore was unique and everything. And then in he walks at the end of the, at the, end of the song, part of the service, and he's wearing those clothes. And I'm like, whoa, he's wearing the very clothes from the dream. And then he gets up there and he begins to preach. And he's preaching his Thanksgiving Day sermon, the last part of it. It was a two-part sermon. And then 
he stops in the middle of it and he steps out and he puts his hands out like he did in a dream and he says i don't know what i could have done to deserve this but people in the church are attacking me in the upper management of it <laughs> and they want they're saying all these horrible things to me and I don't know what I could have done and he began to say the same thing that he said in the dream and so then so then what happened was uh after the sermon I approached him and told him hey I had this dream and then I called him or he called me at home and I told him and then he rebuked me and the Lord was talking to me and <clears throat> in in there and he rebuked me and told me all this stuff none of it was true and I told him the Lord tells me that you need two hundred dollars more a month to make your bills and 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 the lord wants me to give you that money and and i said and your wife and your daughter the lord told me that they had some special sin that they were sharing and stuff and so i told him all that and he's like oh everything you're saying is a lie except for the money and anybody you know everybody needs extra money and so then he said i don't want you ever to call me again or come up to me in church or any of this stuff he's just so hateful and then he hung up on me slammed the phone down on my ear and then uh a week later i didn't go to church and i went to a different church and then on monday he called me on the phone and apologized and said everything i told him was absolutely true in fact that morning in the church when he wore that clothes he said everybody was clapping and whistling at him and he says look i know i know he says I never wear clothes like this. He says, but my wife bought these for me a year ago and I've never worn them, but I felt led to wear these clothes this morning. I don't know why, but I'll, ne I'll guarantee you I'll never wear them again. So then anyway, and that's the ones he wore in the dream because God led him to do it. And you guys could trust me or not. I mean, I could give you the guy's name. His name is David Williams. He's a, he lives in Bakersfield, California now. He used to be a pastor. Anyway, uh, I told him, when we began to talk the second time and he apologized i said well the lord told me this and then god began to speak to me and told me tell him that if he does not humble himself and repent that he will be he will quit the ministry and i told him that and he's like no way i will never do that blah 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 well and then he thanked me and he said anytime you got a dream from the lord come and tell me and then he came in two weeks later and quit the ministry and he'd shaved his face like in the dream his goatee was gone he was going to work in the oil fields and they wouldn't let him have a goatee, so they made him shave. He quit the ministry like the Lord said. He wouldn't humble himself and repent. You see, his daughter had been raped at the other church that he pastored in Colorado. And it was a close friend of theirs. Somebody they knew did it, and he blamed God. He's like, God, why didn't you tell me this guy was going to rape my daughter? And his wife and his daughter were just sick over this thing happening to her. And they were sharing that, see, and they hated God, and they didn't want anything to do with the gospel anymore. And his daughter could sing so beautifully. And you wonder, why do these bad things happen to Christians? Like with me and Patrick, and they hacking, hacking my account, doing all this horrible stuff. Even now, I can't get back my email account that I had for 20 years. And so, what I'm telling you is, God is speaking to me. And God told me about Donald Trump. And him being the nominee. And now that's happening. And then the other thing the Lord told me was he's coming soon. <laughs> and that he's going to destroy the earth. Okay. He's going to destroy it. When the tribulation period happens. One half of all the earth I believe population is killed. <laughs> and the earth is all the green grass is burned up. And all the navies are destroyed. And the water turns into blood. And the Lord told me. Here we go again. My battery's going down. And the Lord told me, Ezekiel 23, 36 through 23, And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations. Do you hear me? God Almighty has said numerous times in the Old Testament that He is going to judge all nations wherein He has scattered Israel. You see, our president is coming against Israel. To attack Israel. When Israel bought that land uh, to use as a base to fly their planes out to stop the Iranians. You see, the Iranians have nuclear material. The Iranians have bomb making stuff. They have rockets. They're going to shoot. I saw three rockets come into Israel and they were nuclear tipped. And I made a video about it. <clears throat> and I don't know when that happens. But I'm telling you, please hear me. God is about to judge this world. And the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the Son of God, Yeshua, Emmanuel, I'm telling you. 
As a prophet of the Lord, I'm telling you, he's coming. He said these things. He is going to judge them, and he is going to magnify himself in the earth. Like I just said from Ezekiel, do you hear me? All you who are in the world who think you know something, you're about to suffer the most horrendous thing. And the reason it's going to happen is not because God is not a loving God. It's because you have rejected him and you have went against him and you have mocked his people in his name for these past 2,000 years saying, where is the promise of his coming? Where is it? It never happened since every, everybody's dead that's ever said it. Well, I'm not going to die from it. You see, the Lord is coming. He's coming, I'm telling you. He's coming very soon, and there are going to be so many people that are in dire straits, man. Because all the zombies are going to come out when the power goes down and this attack happens and all this stuff. People will kill each other within days over food and sex and all this stuff. And you don't want to be a woman left here during that time. You do not want that. Uh-uh. It's going to be hard enough to be a man. <laughs> you see, horrific things are going to happen. Christ himself, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the Lord told me. And he says it in his word as a verification. He said, I am he who speaks of things that are not as though they are. And then they happen. You see, and that is what this is a testament of. I am a testament to you that God Almighty is speaking to this planet. God is speaking to Israel. God is speaking to those rabbis who are against God's word. Those from the Sanhedrin. Shame on you, God says. Shame on you, God says. Shame on you. You are in trouble. I am going to bring judgment against you and your homes and your houses. And all that you have will be taken from you. Including the thing you value most, which is the gospel, will be taken from you. The Lord is coming. Tell everybody you know. This thing needs to go viral. I'm telling you, the Lord is about to come. The Lord is about to come. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm telling you he's coming. Just like he showed me the thing about Saeed in a month later. The thing he showed me about Israel. Many things, and they, some of them took a year or two years. But I'm telling you, the Lord is coming. How can these things be if Donald Trump gets in there? You see, if Donald Trump becomes president, he will expose the corruption of all government. And they're not going to allow that. They're either going to kill him. They're going to stop him some way. He cannot be president. There are black book projects that are taking trillions of dollars of taxpayer dollars and funneling it into this thing. You see, whatever they're doing with these fallen angels, they think they're aliens. They're not. And maybe that's the excuse. That's the great delusion that aliens have came down and settled everything once this war happens. I don't know. There's a movie called Childhood Inn that came out on the Sci-Fi Channel, and it talks about a book that Arthur C. Clarke wrote about aliens coming, and, and then they scrape all the people off the earth, and the young people, and kill all the old ones. They kill everybody. And at first they seem like really good guys. But they're not, and they look like the devil. And their planet is the devil planet of fire and brimstone. Watch it, Childhood Inn. It's on the Sci-Fi Channel. I think you can watch it online. It's impressive. That's what happens. <laughs> the devil is coming to call himself Savior. He's going to stand in the holy place and stop the, sac the sacrifices. How can there not be a temple? How can there be sacrifices without a temple? I had this guy that calls himself a rabbi, but he says he's a Christian. says, oh yeah, there's no Jesus builds the third temple. No, because there's going to be sacrifices going on during the tribulation period. And the, and the Antichrist steps in there and does the abomination, calls himself God, and stops the daily sacrifice. There's no daily sacrifice happening now. And then I try to tell the guy, and he just calls me names and, and calls me a troll and says I'm not a Christian. And then he blocks me. You see, because people don't want to know the truth. And I'm trying to tell you guys, if anybody's a witness, listen to me. I've told you so many things that Almighty God has told me. I've gave the word to you. I've told you. I've long suffered with many of you, sent you personal emails. I've sent money to people. I've tried to help people. And look, I'm telling you. Kaya. 
The Lord is coming. I'm telling you, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Almighty God, is coming. And His name is Yeshua in the Hebrew. And He is coming. And He is going to destroy this planet with tribulation. And that is what's coming. And no Christians who really love the Lord will stand in that. They will not, I declare to you. The Lord is coming. And He is going to take us away. There will be two in the field. And one will be taken. The Lord is coming. Two in a bed. And one is taken. Hallelujah. Believe that. Stand on it. Pray for your relatives. The Lord is coming. I'm telling you, I don't know when or how soon, but I'm telling you it's going to happen. It is going to happen, and you can take that to the bank. The Lord is coming. <laughs> Why would he tell me all these other things and then testify them and show me, and then they happen? What is it? Is it I do it by the finger of Beelzebub like they accuse Christ? You Judaizers and all you who hate God and hate the rapture, who think you got to make yourself righteous somehow, your sanctification comes from the Lord God Almighty, not from yourselves. Yes, you don't sin. Yes, you try your best. Yes, you do these things. But in the end, your righteousness, your righteousness is only the righteousness of Christ, and yours is as filthy rags. The scripture tells us that. Who are you, O oh little puny man, who seeks to argue with Almighty God himself? Huh. There were prophets here. Moses was one of them. John the Baptist was one. And people jumped on them and threw things at them and tried to kill them. Just like now. The only security you have is in Christ. You cannot continue in sin because if you do, you're a slave to it and you will be left behind. Do you hear me? Stop whatever God's telling you to do. If you are doing something and he's saying stop, if you're feeling conviction, you better stop right now. Whatever it is, I don't care how little, how big. <laughs> you listen to the Holy Spirit. He's trying to sanctify you. Do you know in the Bible it says in Leviticus that if a man and a woman if they have relations that the man and the woman are both unclean the next day or that day that they do it, they're unclean until they've richly washed and a 24-hour period has passed. It says in there, and there's a man and a woman, and that's sanctified under God. The marriage was ordained by him, but yet you are unclean before him. When Moses and them and the children of Israel were going to get the word of God, when Moses was going up to get the Ten Commandments, he told them to wash their garments, to sanctify themselves on the second day. And on the third day, you men do not go near your wives. Why? Why is that? <laughs> God has rules, man. And he has regulations. And you know what? I'll tell you a big secret. He owns this universe. Hallelujah. Almighty God owns the universe and he owns you. Every single one of you. And the thing is, he could wipe us all out with a thought. But no, he's love. But he's got rules, man. And most people mock him. And they think, he's, he can't tell me to do that. Well, this is my life. I got a right to live it. That's what, that's what Eve said as she bit into that fruit. And sent all mankind down a path. And handed it to her husband. Huh. I'm telling you the truth. God Almighty. He is sending His Son. And He's going to descend from heaven. With the voice of the archangel. And He's going to blow the trump of God. The shofar. And the dead in Christ first will rise. And we who are alive and remain will be caught up with Him in the air. And will be there with Him forever. <laughs> <clears throat> that is the promise of God to you and to me. I don't know what else to say. These things keep happening. What God keeps telling me keeps happening. Oh, it's just the delusions of a crazy man. Well, how's that work when the Lord told me? And then I needed $250 to pay a bill. My wife was crying about it when I was working at the fire department. And I wanted to buy a new Bible because the Bible I had was given to me as a gift in 1973. And it was had been destroyed, fell apart from using it so much. 
And I said, Lord, I need $250. And I was crying out to him, I need to pay this bill for my wife and I want to buy this Bible. And I need 250 And I'm driving at the end of the day and the Lord tells me, stop right here and buy one lottery ticket. And I was in my work truck for the fire department. I pulled in. It was a 7-Eleven. And, and I slammed on the brakes and turned in there. He said, pull in right here. And I pulled in. And I got in there and I said, Lord, I don't know which one. And he said, you tell the woman to pick. When I walked in the store and I told her, you choose. I said, I want one lottery ticket. She said, which one? I said, you choose. She said, there's 25. I said, you pick the one. She picked it. I scratched it. It was $250 exactly. Oh, but God doesn't exist. That was all a happenstance. <laughs> yeah. God told me something 35 years ago. And that happened in the last few years. 2012, I was made aware that it happened, what he told me. You see? God is not a liar. He is not a man that he should lie. He loves you, yes. He wouldn't give you a serpent or a stone when you ask him for bread. But he has rules and regulations, and he's about to judge this world. And that's what this whole tribulation period is. It's the bowls poured out of the wrath of God on this earth. And the first thing that happens is the four, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. You see, and people just want to mock God and say it's not going to happen. But I'm declaring to you it's going to happen. And there's going to be so many people. I looked into it. I saw it. It's just horrific what happens. Unbelievable. In the United States of America, people think we're sheltered. You're not. You're not going to be. 110 pound stones are going to fall all over the surface of the earth the bible says it says all men both great small free and bond hide in the caves and cry out huh where are those christians it says all well except for the christians oh i forgot to put that in there huh all right well what are those elect what are those it says in there these are those that came out and washed their blood in the Lamb. Well, I thought you were washed in the blood when you confessed your sins. How come you have to be washed again by being tortured? How many of you are going to stand there while you watch your child get his fingers cut off? Like that pastor over there when ISIS had him and said, Now I want you to renounce your faith in Christ. And they had his 11-year-old boy. And, and, they, and he said, No, I won't do it. And then they began to cut his little boy's fingers off with a pair of... Uh, dykes the things that they use to cut wire electrical wire with oh daddy help he cried now will you do it will you renounce your faith no uh, and they cut them off little bit by little bit till they got down to nubs on each finger they cut off all 10 of that boy's fingers well his dad watched and the boy cried out and cried out it took an hours to cut this boy's fingers off and then they crucified him and his son. <laughs> How many of you are going to stand there and watch them rape your wife and destroy everything and then not change your mind, not take the mark, huh? While your wife's pleading, help, help. Not very many people would make it through that. And these dopes that are on YouTube that think they're some kind of preachers are saying, that's what you're going to go through. Because you see, that's how God cleanses you, by making you suffer Oh, I thought it was done by the blood of the Lamb. What did the Israelites suffer when they put that blood on the lamb, on the door and they ate the Lamb? They had to eat the life of it. Oh, oh, you mean, oh, you didn't understand that? When they, he said, eat it standing up like you're getting ready to run out the door. And don't leave any of it. What is the meat of the Lamb? It's the life, the living, the thing it did, how it moved around. It's the life of it. They had to eat it. They had to live the life of it. You eat it, you live it. The blood itself was on the doorpost and the lintel. And the angel came and went, oh, they're covered by the blood. And they left. And the destruction didn't happen to them. No, no, no. That, uh, the book of Exodus is wrong. The, the Jews actually had to pay for it. And they were tortured and beat all the way to the promised land. Yeah, and then they finally made it in. Nope. <laughs> There's so many uninformed people. And they want to preach that and get on me, and anybody that believes it, instead of just keeping it to themselves, they're on some crusade from Satan, because they've got some mistake in their mind, it's like those good friends of mine, Delmer and Elsie, read that scripture, where Christ said, there be some standing here that shall not taste death, till they see the kingdom of heaven, 
And so Delmer and Elsie believed they could live forever. You know, and I'm like, well, how do you argue? And I was young, I didn't understand, and then the Lord revealed that to me. <clears throat> he said, well, Gary, didn't some of them see him transfigured, and they say they saw the kingdom of heaven? Oh, that's who it was that was standing there, Peter and <laughs> the brother, James, and those guys. And they saw it, and then they wanted to build temples to Christ and to Moses and them. You see, because he saw Moses and Elijah talking to Christ. And then some people try to say they think they're the one of the two prophets. And the Bible says the two prophets are in heaven with Christ until they come down. Uh, but yet I'm one of them. No, nobody's one of them that you see. <laughs> Not to my knowledge, because the Bible says they're there. I don't know how that works. Do you? Do you presume to know how God's word works? I'm telling you as a prophet of God that God has shown me certain things and I could prove it. And people still go, well, I don't know. Let me, you know, God does give me dreams too. Well, well, yeah, I had a dream. I dreamed once something. Did it happen? Well, not yet, but it might. It could, you know. But like they talk about, the scientists talk about the statistical odds of the first amoeba or the first single cell animal being born is the same as if, a tornado came through a junkyard full of all the parts and it just whipped up all the parts that were in there and assembled them into a 747. That's the statistical odds that you're faced with. Could that ever happen? Well, I guess that's like the deal with the monkeys. A thousand monkeys typing on typewriters could type the Bible. Never happened. They tried that. They had monkeys typing and they never typed nothing intelligible. No sentences, no complete paragraphs, nothing. That's a lie from the devil. You see, inside every cell in your body is a little thing, and it's got a motor in it that has a, called a flagella, it's a propeller, and that propeller has a shaft on it, and that thing has, has, has stators in there, and they fire electrical charge and cause that propeller to move, and then that thing goes up to your cells, and it uses electricity to determine, oh, there's a tear in your cell, there's damage, and then it goes, gets DNA products, and it unzips them, takes a piece of it out, goes over and makes a repair job for your cell. Now, for your cell to work, it has to have that thing in there repairing. But yet, evolution came. So how did that get here? How did that evolve by uh, um, an energetic particle striking the DNA? If there's, Do you see? The insanity of all this, the faith it takes for them to believe the impossible. They believed that there was rocks on the earth, and the rocks got wet, and then there was volcanic activity, and there was lightning bolts and stuff, and then that caused these chemicals to come together that are that the can and then those chemicals arrange themselves in just the right proportion to make the first uh semblances of dna and then that dna somehow uh, combined with other dna to make the first animal it's impossible if they could do it they've had 50 years to do it why haven't they done it they can't it's impossible it will never happen if everything's the same everywhere why isn't there trees and all this stuff on mars and on venus no life in any of those places. You see, and the other planets are frozen solid. <laughs> and you see, they want to try to get you to believe in some fairy tale. They don't even know how gravity works, and they've worked on it for years. And there's the guys on Suspicious Observer will tell you it's an electromagnetic thing. It's electricity. They've proven that comets and cometary comas and the stuff coming off of comets are by electrical discharge. You see? There's just so much. Everything changes. First, we can't go faster than the speed of light. Oops, this this guy, Mexican guy, I think, in Mexico, came up with a, or in here in the United States anyway, he was trained in Mexico, I can't remember. He's an engineer. He came up with an idea how to make the warp drive work from Star Trek. I can't remember his name. You can look him up on the internet. It's possible. Now, NASA, and then they said, well, it'd take all the power produced by the entire universe to operate it, to fold space or to cause space to be warped. And then they found out a mathematical way around that. And then they've done experiments and oh, it works. <coughs> so now they can build the Starship Enterprise. In fact, NASA has one and they're saying by 2025 or 2125, they'll have a spaceship like the Enterprise flying from here to there. And it's instantaneous travel. It's not like it was on the Enterprise. Warp 10 is the fastest you can go. And it takes you days to get somewhere, but it's even though you're going so fast, hundreds of times past the speed of light, 
This is instantaneous transmission of data across the distance. And then the, even the transporter, they figured out how to move molecules around using electromagnetics and breaking things down and reassembling them. Uh-oh, the transporter's possible. You see, God said it in the Old Testament way before Gene Broddenberry. He said that the men, that's why he confused their language at the Tower of Babel. He said, there is nothing that they cannot do. Almighty God himself, there is nothing. I got to confound their language. You see? I'm through talking, I guess. Man, I wish you guys would do something with this video of mine. Save some souls somehow. Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne and we ask you to to touch these people, God, and bring salvation to their heart and healing to their families and their lives. We ask that they forget about trying to shove the gospel down somebody's throat, but live it before them in love and mercy and show them as an example like Christ did. We ask that you'd undertake for their families, for their health, God. We ask most of all, Father God, it says in your word, to pray always that you're accounted worthy to escape all these things. And your son said it right after he talked about this tribulation period and all these bad things happen. Pray always that you are counted worthy to escape. How do we escape, God, if there's no rapture? Do we escape with our beans and our bullets? Are we hiding in a cave when the hundred pound rocks fall from the sky and destroy every structure on earth? Is that how we do it, Almighty God? I don't know. These people, these silly people that think they know your word and they can't explain this. It's just like scientists believing someday they'll find out how that little flagella worked and how it got in there to make the cell in the very beginning. Because they can find these original cells and in it is that thing. How did it get there if it evolved? It evolved in one whole piece. <coughs> All the parts came together, right? In that soup. Uh -huh, yeah. Let's believe that. We can't believe that there's a God that loves us and made this universe for us. But that Satan, his enemy, caused the world to fall and put it into this fallen state. We can't believe that. No, that's too hard to believe. But the other nonsense, we can believe that easy. What he's saying about <laughs> swallowing a camel, squinting at a gnat and swallowing a camel. Oh, these people are so silly, God. Help them, Father God, in the mighty name of Yeshua. Bring all of those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life into your kingdom, even as you promised. God, we believe you. And we praise your holy name, Almighty God. We praise your holy name for all things that you've done. Blessed be thy name. In the name of Yeshua, we come before you and we pray these things. Amen.